Hey guys, do you also struggle with balancing your school or studies, your work, having a social life and also taking care of yourself? I definitely know that it can be very challenging balancing all of that and that is also one of the reasons why I wanted to film this video because in this video I'm going to explain to you how I plan my life in order to manage to stay on top with my law school studies also run my own business and web shop, still have time to see my friends and also take care of my physical and mental health. I am going to show you how to plan effectively and how I use my planner. Also, at the end of this video, I have a discount code and a giveaway for you guys. So definitely keep watching till the end of this video if you want to enter in the giveaway. If you're excited for this video, please give it a thumbs up and let's start. So the first thing that you need in order to plan effectively is a planner that works for you. I know there are so many planners out there, so many planners available, but I've been using my Supplied by Lily student desk planner for two years now and I'm telling you guys I would never switch to another planner. I designed this planner myself to fit all of my student and entrepreneurial needs and ever since I've started using it, my life has been way more organized and productive. In my planner I have a monthly and also a weekly overview and I am going to show you how I fill in both. So first I'm going to start with my monthly overview. A monthly overview for me is essential to keep in mind the bigger picture. I'm a very visual person, so in order for me to make everything way more organized and easier for me to remember, I use a color code. I highly recommend using different colors and making a color code for different aspects of your life. For example, the color code that I use is that I use a certain color for my work-related stuff, a certain color for my study-related stuff, and a certain color for my private life. So for example, meeting with my friends or even going to the dentist. I use different markers and fine liners for my color codes. The markers and fine liners that I usually use are from Stabilo because they have very pretty pastel shades and also from Zebra Milk Liner. I'll link them down below if you're also planning on creating a color code. If you don't have a very detailed color code, you can totally remember it, but I use different colors also for different subjects, so I like to have a little note with my color code explained so I never forget. So when it comes to filling out my monthly schedule, the first thing that I do is fill out all the dates. I didn't add any dates to my planner because this way I can actually use it all year round and if I have a month or a week that I haven't really done that much, so I haven't used my planner, for example during the holidays, I can still use those pages but just skip a month. When I'm filling in my monthly schedule, I usually start with the most important things that I don't want to forget. These can be things in my private life such as a concert or a hairdresser's appointment. But these can also be collaborations that I have scheduled or also meetings with professors or deadlines. After I've filled in my monthly schedule and I have a good overview of special events I have that month, it's time for my weekly schedule. And the first thing that I do with my weekly schedule is fill in what I like to call my routine schedule. With my routine schedule, I mean things that I have coming up every week or every day or every month. These are things as your daily classes or lectures. And if you have a job, you can write down your uh, weekly job schedule. These can also be things such as your weekly dance classes or other workout routines. After you filled in your routine schedule that doesn't really change every week, you can fill out the rest of your time. 
And when it comes to planning out the tasks that you're planning on doing that week, the most important thing is to make a rough estimate of how much time certain tasks cost you. For example, if you know that you are a very slow reader, but you're very quick in making overviews or outlines or schedules, you can make sure that you plan more time for reading the actual material than for outlining and vice versa. Also, another thing to keep in mind when you're making your weekly schedule is to know how long you can stay concentrated. I often get questions from you guys asking me how you can concentrate longer, telling me that you struggle with staying concentrated for more than 30 minutes. To me personally, the biggest tip that I can give you is to not force your concentration. Some people just have a shorter span of concentration than others. And if you know that you can only work productively for 30 minutes, make sure you give yourself more breaks in order to stay concentrated. If you, for example, have a short span of concentration, make sure sure you divide your study tasks throughout the day and mix it up with doing things such as cleaning your apartment or room, doing groceries or watching a series. For me personally, I know that I can stay concentrated for about 50 minutes. I know that I'm quite a fast reader, but I'm a very slow outliner or summarizer. So I definitely don't need that much time to read. Usually I can do my readings for one class in one or two hours, but I I definitely need multiple hours in order to summarize that material. Another thing that you should keep in mind when making your weekly planning is to know what times you are the most focused. I personally believe that everyone has a different time they're most productive at and I'm personally the most productive in the mornings. Even though I'm not really a morning person and I like to sleep in, I know that my brain functions the brightest whenever I study in the morning. That's why I often do my outlining during the morning. Then during the afternoon, I usually like to spend time filming because I need daylight. And then during the night, I spend time actually editing the content for my videos or my blog posts, or I spend time writing my research papers or doing my readings. Another thing that is quite basic, but still very important to remember, is that you should always start with the most important tasks. If you have a deadline for a certain subject the next day, make sure you start with that and don't spend your time doing other tasks that are not as important. Another thing that you can do when creating your schedule is to specifically dedicate time to certain tasks, even if they're small, but you really struggle with it. For example, if you're struggling with not forgetting to do groceries or cleaning your apartment or having some me time, it's a good idea to specifically plan that in your planner, even though it doesn't seem as important as studying or your work related tasks. This way you'll keep reminding yourself to do it and you won't forget it. Another thing that is important to keep in mind in your weekly schedule is your long distance deadlines. Of course, I like to use my monthly schedule to keep in mind my long distance deadlines, but it's nice to have them in the back of your head, even if you're creating just your weekly schedule. That's why in my planner, I have this specific section that is dedicated to exams and deadlines in every weekly overview. Here, I write all my exams and all my deadlines for the upcoming semester. So even though I still have a lot of time for those deadlines, I always keep them in mind, even when I'm creating my weekly schedule for months prior to deadline. The last thing that I can really recommend when it comes to creating your schedule is to keep it realistic. Sometimes we have so much different things to do and we just have too little time to actually do it. In those cases, it's important to keep your planning realistic and to not over plan your time. Sometimes life is difficult and you have to make hard choices and we're all human and sometimes we can just not do everything that we have to do. In order to not feel like a failure, it's important to keep your planning realistic and to schedule the most important things and not overwhelming yourself. Whenever I feel overwhelmed, I also like to create a to-do list in my supply by Lily to-do list.
I'm the type of person that has a very creative brain and I feel like it's working 24 seven, creating different ideas and different things that I have to do. I cannot always write them down in my weekly schedule or my monthly planning. So that's why I like to use my to-do list. I love using this to-do list because it's like a mini schedule in one. It separates work, study and other to-dos and it also enables you to prioritize certain to-dos by writing it at the must do, should do or could do section. Sometimes it's just nice to have a little to-do list with all the things that you have to do with not a specific time frame planned. Especially if you feel overwhelmed with the amount of tasks that you need to do, this can be quite helpful. The last but so not least tip that I can give you when you're making your schedule is to make sure you cross your tasks off. Planning can be quite stressful and negative if you spend so much time creating a planning and then ending up not realizing all the tasks that you planned on doing. That's why it's very important that if you actually finish a task, you check it off. This will give you a good boost of confidence and we all can use that. So these were all of my tips when it comes to creating a schedule or a planning for your studies or school, work, and personal life and I hope it was helpful. If it was helpful please give it a thumbs up and now it's time for the giveaway. So guys this is the end of my how to plan video and I hope it was helpful. I really tried to give you guys all my tips and tricks that I use to create my own planning um, but I think the biggest advice that I can give you is to just start. Although it's very important to take time to make a good schedule and a good planning, in the end you should not waste more time making schedules than actually studying or doing your work. And with that being said, it's now time for the most exciting part of this video and that is the giveaway! So for this giveaway I'm going to give away two prizes. Um, you can win or the Supplied by Lily Student Desk Planner in Luxurious Floral or the Supply by Lily Student Desk Planner in Luxurious Marble. Um, the inside of both of them is completely the same, just the outside is different. And I also have a whole video about them and all the other items of my stationery, links down below and somewhere here. Also, they have no dates, so you can use them all year round, so don't worry about that. And uh, I have a 15% discount code for you guys. If you use the code Planner Pro, you'll get 15% of any desk planner. So with that being said, it's now time for the giveaway rules. So first of all, you have to be a subscriber to my YouTube channel because this is a thank you for all of you guys that are supporting me. Second of all, you should also follow me on my Instagram, which is lilylike.com. And the last step is that you should leave a comment on YouTube, so under this video or under this Instagram post, which I'll be posting on um, my lilylike.com Instagram, but also on my Supplied by Lily Instagram and my Studying with Lily Instagram. So you can follow all of those if you want a bigger chance of winning. Um, but you should leave a comment down below saying that you're entering the giveaway and which planner you want to win. But the most important step is that you should let me know what kind of stationery you want to see from me next because I am planning on doing a whole new collection for the new school year uh, for Supplied by Lily. Um, and this time I want to expand even more. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments down below. And this way you maybe not only win one of the planners, but your idea will maybe become reality as well. Quickly just want to say I'm currently only doing paper stationery, so no pens and no markers because I didn't really find any manufacturers yet um, that could help me out with that. So currently it's only like printed stationery. So any printed stationery suggestion would be very much appreciated and that way you also enter uh, in the giveaway. I'll put all the rules down below in the description box as well and also all the links. So yeah, you don't have to remember everything that I just said, just check out the description box down below. And with that being said, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a little thumbs up. Um, and yeah, I'll talk to you very soon in a new video. Bye guys!